Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. So we are back now, and I'm with Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing great as well. Uh, as the talk <laughs> go by, I keep warming up, and this this is a very nice feeling. I look absolutely big with this down jacket, but you know it works, and I'm not going to question it. You do know for the people coming every year to EmacsConf that I do try to look dashing, but I also need to be warm because this year we are doing it in December and not in November. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Matt, how about you start reading questions in the pad? I believe you've got one already. I got one question already, yes. The question is, so with one line of code, you can create custom hyper button types that are live in any AMX buffer. Is that right? Yes. The short answer is yes. <laughs> Maybe I should use the presentation and go, go into here. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, no, we did wrong. So here, this the field macro allows you, in principle, to in one line define a hyper button starting with the starting delimiter and an end delimiter, and then there is this uh, mapping to whatever functionality should sort of come out of pressing that button. So that was significantly more than just a yes. <laughs> Thank you. And we're glad we put, it, put your screen up so that you can answer this. So people, just to remind you, so we do have uh, the pad to ask you questions uh, over there. We are, let me check how much time we have for this Q&A. We have until 15 of the next hour, which leaves about 20 minutes. But um, right now we only have one question. So people on ISC, uh, if you could place questions <laughs> in the pad. Uh, Right. Sorry, I'm, I'm managing multiple things at the same time. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Anything else? Because, you know, to let people know, uh, we do ask speakers to submit pre-recordings to us because it makes our life much easier on the day of the recording at EmacsConf, on the day of the conference at EmacsConf, because this way we can get away with not having to worry about live presentation, uh, catching fires and uh, not Oh, my, I cannot share my screen. My microphone is not working. So not only is everything working so today inside the BBB room, but Matt also sent a pre-recording. So that's great. Um, I got another uh, question. Oh, yes, go. Well, please, so, I'm down so the, then in the background. <laughs> let me jump over to the, the, the second question. The second question is, is there a good way to share common patterns for links other than the ones that you shared? Shall those be pull request to your repository. Uh, OK, let me think. Uh, those should not be pull requests to your our repository because these are your, your patterns, your links. There's something you would share, like uh, that I'm showing here. Uh, could even be like you're sharing maybe the pattern, how, how this button looks, but maybe the implementation could, in principle, be different. So. Uh, uh, the one you're sharing with might put their information in some other storage that might be accessed with the same using the same information, or maybe just placed in another some other part of the file system. So, uh, uh, so the only good way to share it would be like to to send it over email or some other messages to to someone else. <laughs> share it some way. Uh, third question: I like the link to evaluate calc expressions, any way to get the outcome into the buffer and not just in the message window. Uh, I mean, that would be up to the sort of the implementation of the function that you would, would use in the button. I mean, the function that uh, is evaluated could do anything, really. So uh, that was just an example to show that you could you don't have to be a link that you actually go to some new place. It can just be some computation or whatever. So that's just trying to show that uh, you shouldn't be limiting yourself to just thinking about links. It can be computing anything. It's really the uh, the thing about Elisp, really. It's just when people ask you, you know, when they come from 
outside of Emacs and they ask you, oh, can you all, can you function do this? The answer is more often than not, yes. Can you write it in LS? Yeah, I might need to look at the documentation a little bit, but I'll be able to do it. And you know, Calc does have the ability to paste the result when you are not uh, Calc used as a library, but Calc the uh, mode. When you type something in it and you press Y, it will paste it into the buffer. So, which means that there is the ability to communicate between Calc and the buffer you're currently in. So it's probably just a matter of doing Control H K Y inside the Calc mode, checking which function it's running, and just putting this at the end of the button. And voila, there you go. So Matt, uh, I don't think you have yeah. a question at the moment. We're going to leave some time oh. for people to gather more questions. But I, th hmm? if I'm not mistaken, I'm actually I might be wrong with the uh, we changed the schedule a little bit. But you're the first uh, hyperbole talk for today, and as yeah. such, you are introducing introducing people to the concept of but buttons, which is a very instrumental to hyperbol hyperbole. Hyperbole? Hyperbole? I'm going to go with hyperbole, actually. Um, so could you maybe, I know it's a big task, and you've also touched upon what hyperbole was, but a lot of people always ask, you know, hyperbole, org mode, I see both of them sometimes crop up at the top of the subreddit, and I'm not exactly sure which one is doing which. You're using the term links, and this speaks to me as someone who works in several custom methods. So maybe could you... I'm asking you with a very difficult question now. Could you differentiate maybe hyperbole and org, or try your best, knowing that we'll have more hyperbole talks later in the conference? Well, I, I will not. I will not try to get into that sort of warm, <laughs> let's say, wormhole because uh, uh, I don't think they should be compared. They're more companions, so. Uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think that's the, it's the best way you could have answered this question. And you know, I'm going to remove you from this tricky situation in which I put yourself. Uh, yes, they are complementary tool. They do some of the same thing. They do have different philosophy. And at the end, if they allow you to take notes, if they allow you to relate notes in different places, you know, it's a good note taking system. Let's put it at this. Let's not concern ourselves with comparison. At, at least, or you know, the best thing about comparing is cross-pollination, which is made all the more easier with something like Emacs, because ideas from one mode can be taken and applied in another mode. Now, maybe not straightforwardly between hyperbole and org, but the idea can be translated at the very least. Uh, you did have a question. I'll answer this one very quick, because it's I a quick question. question. Uh, yeah. Yes, you want to take I it? Just, I just want to quickly follow up on what you said there, that... Uh, sure. Uh, Ah, now I lost. I lost it. Maybe it come back. So uh, sure. I'll, I'll give you a few minutes. Yeah. Let's jump into the question instead, because I got an answer. Uh, uh, so thank you for everybody who wrote the answer. Great. Uh, and the next question was: This talk is really straightforward, so that's probably why there aren't many questions. Maybe Matt could talk about hyperbole in general. While he has, aha, okay, that 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 was maybe what you were trying to. To, to do here so maybe i should and the last one is second question last question is how did you present the loss search bar at the right of your buffer a lot of people are wondering the loss search bar oh well you have to elaborate on what the loss search bar is then is, is i i can although i do have a slight problem my a daily backup is running so if my voice is crackly i'm sorry i can't do anything about it can you hear me <laughs> right Matt? Yeah, you're shopping up, but I can understand what you're saying. So that's great. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so Lossage is the stuff that you have on the right side of your screen. It's the commands that you're running and the key binding that you're using to run them. And yes, this is a mode that we ask or that we provide uh, Emacs yeah. on speakers with. And it's called interactive log mode, which is available on GitHub which will allow you to have this pretty print on the right side of your screen or wherever, really. It's just a buffer. Yeah, and I haven't used it before this, doing this presentation, so it was a news to me. So I'm, I'm very new to using it, So, but it works. Well, if you make it look natural. If you move around, you see that, yeah, so it's out, yeah. 
So uh, for the people, we did open up the BBB chat room now, which means that again, if you go to the uh, talk page for Matt, uh, where this was button, the talk name buttons, you will be able to join the BBB by clicking on the link and you'll be able to ask questions right away to Matt. We've uh, started a nice question about org, hyperbole and stuff like this, but maybe we should uh, yes, I'm trying to save you here. Maybe we should recenter on the buttons <laughs> and what they can do, uh, especially what we talked about ELISP allowing buttons to be whatever. And since, Matt, you have your Emacs available, uh, it might be a good opportunity for you to show some of the buttons that you're using as well, maybe some different one that you've presented. So if people want to join, uh, that would be a great opportunity to ask you questions. Uh, we have about 20 more minutes uh, of Q&A, and if... Uh, we don't have any more people showing up and uh, no more questions in the pad. We can also go on a little break and I would uh, appreciate this. <laughs> but I, I'm also happy to stay. Yeah, uh, I understand the, the interest in, in, but there are more talks coming up in uh, relates to hyperbole and I haven't prepared any, any sort of any cool stuff. Uh, what, what I could mention that I think is cool, I will not demo that, but uh is uh I, I work as a programmer and then i have uh, different support systems um which uh, uh have this uh, uh what say strings identifiers that maybe link to different in information like a ticketing system for instance that with your box and could be like a normal text string that identify your 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 uh, your bug or your, your ticket and uh, uh, it's internal tool so uh, no one else can support that but by using hyperbole i can write my own uh, interpretation of that uh, string and get that to work as a as a button so i can easily from the code or from some notes uh, uh, link directly into that ticketing system uh, so uh, that, that, that that's the point i'm trying to make with uh, this talk is that it's it's uh, uh, useful for setting up your own environment that only you really know about and how you want to sort of navigate with your information uh, and it's not about sort of uh, uh, trying to so sort of force some type of work stream upon anybody it's more like giving you the opportunity to sort of streamline your own workflow instead uh, I think the, the remaining talks about hyperbole will be more focused on all the features. It's a multi, multi sort of functional package with a lot, a lot of different stuff in it. So uh, I could not give justice to it in just uh, sort of doing some quick demos. It will not even show what sort of all the things you can do. So yeah, but. I'm going to say for someone saying that you didn't do, you couldn't do justice for the topic. You've done a very fine job, so do not worry about this. Uh, it, it's funny. I was listening to you describe this, the buttons merely, but you know when you think about it, you could have forgotten about the buttons and merely remembered about Emacs, and would make as much sense as well because Emacs as a whole, the Elisp stuff behind it allows you to do whatever interface you want very easily, and the buttons really enshrines the. Uh, interface type of things really because you just have a button that is running code it's no longer oh you need to go to the end of the parentheses or the end of the sex when you need to evaluate it there's something more interactive about it which feels closer to your user interface as a result to this but uh, i've already blabbered enough we do have someone with a microphone in a vbb chat so does this person want to mute themselves and ask a question maybe oh, i think i have I think I have some uh, very in, sort of knowledgeable person about hyperbole in the chat. Yes, I didn't want to spoil right. it, but I, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, if they're going to unmute themselves. So I don't want to, to put too much pressure you, on them. Oh, can you guys hear me? We can, yes. Uh, hi, Bob. Hi, long time fan of hyperbole. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you might want to cue people in on a joke here, because I'm not yeah. sure if everyone knows who you are. I, I, I wrote hyperbole and um, Matt's my co-maintainer on it. So uh, really exciting to have the first talk here. Uh, I think I just wanted to mention that two things. Maybe you could show a little key series. Uh, just, you know, type one out dynamically and show how simple that is. And then talk about the you keep a daily uh, journal, right? Timestamped 
uh, journal that was originally org mode, and I think uh, you're now using hyperbole's K outliner. So uh, maybe you know mention uh, doing that. Okay, like think it's something that's more than one key sequence, please. Like do do a, a couple a couple operations that you know uh, you, you uh, do a lot of for that are interesting all in one so so the key series is like a, a keyboard macro but uh, uh so it's not limited to one key sequence but any uh any series of uh key sequences can be strung together just like that with nothing else and then and then you activate it the same way as any other button right Yes, but you're putting me on the spot here because now I have to remember actually how, how to write these things. But you just uh, write it the way you would type it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you you see my screen here. Return. Yeah, I see it. So. Do I? Do I? Yeah. Do I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let let's see. So the key series is between these uh, uh, braces, and uh, and you could leave let's try to, marks if you don't. You don't. Oh, maybe we can skip that as well. So, 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 so here's the key series. Though. Let's see what happened. Do I go to the temp folder or not? Boom! I got there. Yeah, it worked. Mm -hmm. Bob, great. <laughs> so well, you, you can string those along, and you can name them, and then reuse them, and you know. So it's sort of like you've got this toolkit that you can embed in all these different modes that you have in Emacs, and you just carry it with you. It's not like yeah. a whole mode unto itself that you always have to use. Yeah, so so in this example here with the, the fill, you can, instead of having uh, uh, like uh, this path, this path, path uh, string here, you can have a, a key series as well. But to, to, to the other point also, uh, Elisp is available, but this is even more available because you don't even have to code using Elisp. So that, that's the point also with this the fill and the file macros. You should be make it even simpler. And if you just know how to type some command, you can use the keys series together with this to, to get get some functionality out of this. I think one of the things we've taken to saying about hyperbole is it's 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 kind of the lightest uh, hypertext markup that you can have, um, as you saw there, right? I mean, there were just braces and all of a sudden it's a live hyper button. So we've tried to strip away like having to write stuff like HTML or, you know, even all the like drawers and uh, um, the property uh, markup in org mode and just provide very, very simple uh, sort of syntactical things similar to what Lisp does uh, so that you can get a lot of power uh, and put buttons everywhere but not have to recognize a lot of syntax or or use a whole bunch of keys uh, on your buttons. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it's pretty interesting, by the way. I, I, I'm sorry I have to do this, but we only have about five more minutes in the Q&A before we need to move on to the next talk. But don't worry, if you've had a, you've had a little test of hyperbole right there, and you'll have more over the weekend. We've had a, we've had a lot of hyperbole talk this year, which is amazing. You know, we usually have a lot of talk about org, but this year it's really the one where we also have a similar amount of hyperbole talk, which is amazing to see. Uh, obviously, I. I'm more of an org guy, but I see so many parallels between the two, so many bridges that could be built as well. And it, it's amazing to see uh, well, the amount of passion that goes into this. Usually I deal with people who are passionate about org, but to see that there's a similar amount of passion on the hyperbole side of things, it's truly amazing to me. Uh, I think we had a, one more question in the, in the pad, if you can take it, Matt. Yeah, the last here is, does the links button great in hyperbole? like the one with the URL get exported on org mode files too, like when exported to HTML. Oh, tricky question. Uh, I mean, the, 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 these implicit buttons, they are just like the patterns. Uh, so the pattern will of course be exported to HTML, but uh, you will not be able maybe to do something there unless you're watching the HTML 
within Emacs, so so the sort of uh, hyperbole machinery would be available. If that makes sense. I mean, yeah, the it, it's possible. It depends what what the encoding is, and but we do have. Um, we have a an outliner mode, the K outliner and hyperbole as well, and that has a, a single command uh, export to HTML. So if you've embedded URLs in there, um, you would see them just like if you embedded them in org mode, and you know uh, potentially the org exporter, if you just write a raw URL, will also encode it for you when you export it. Yeah. You embedded other uh, hyperbole buttons in there. Yeah, but the functionality that is by clicking on that button will not be exported. So, right. well, it's like you can try printing the button. I'm not sure. No amount of clicking on it is actually going to trigger an action. I might be wrong, though. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I mean printing on paper. Uh, very confusing terminology that we're using right there. <laughs> Not printing in a terminal, uh -huh. stuff like this. One, one cool thing if you use the hyperbole export to HTML is that you can expand and collapse uh, your trees in the HTML. Uh, I don't think you can do that with the org export right now. But Bob, you're going to show something of that about that tomorrow, right? I don't think it's in this presentation because I'm oh, it's not in the okay. on uh, the org side right. of the house this time. But yeah. it, it uh, you know, it'll be in a different one about hyperbole some other time. All right. So we have about two minutes until we need to go to the next talk. But uh, thank you so much, Matt. And thank you so much, Bob, also for showing up and giving oh. us a taste of what is probably going to follow up tomorrow. I can't remember. I think your talk is in the afternoon, right, Bob? Correct. Uh, about 1 p.m. E EST. Yes. Yeah, so, so in about 22 hours, 23 hours. I'm trying my best to give you times which are time zone independ independence. So I'm sorry if I'm missing the mark a little bit, but hopefully this would be useful for many people. But otherwise, just check the schedule and you'll be able to get everything. All right. Well, thank you so much, Matt, for answering so many questions and for your presentation as well. I feel like it was good to have your presentation before uh bob's one tomorrow because focusing on one aspect of hyperbole the buttons and linking it to elisp linking it to interactivity linking it to ui i think is going to prime people to then understand fully what hyperbole or what are the capabilities of hyperbole beyond this or inspired by this so thank you so much thanks man thank you great all right great and care. we are going live with the next talk in about 30 seconds uh I think we're going to close the BBB room because nobody has showed up otherwise. So I will see you both later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.